the city is about to be destroyed. And all I'm trying to do is save my family. My kids are not helpful. And my wife is consumed in the world that I heard from the Lord. And I know that it's time to leave. But I can't convince them to come on. It's a lot. When you receive the message and you receive the vision and you receive the word. And every time you're about to rest. Every time you find solace, every time you seek him in prayer, every time it's time for downtime, every time you get a chance at a break, the attack is at the door. And it's personal. It's not just coming, attacking your kids. It's, it's not just coming attacking your wife. It's, it's coming against your word. It's a lot. Sometimes it seems like, what's the point? So I was better before God moved in. It's better off. You didn't know peace back then, but not knowing it, you didn't have to protect it. It seems like that is like the hardest thing now where you're trying to get the family to see and nobody sees it. Trying to get them to leave and to run and to be away and nobody sees it. And the word is in the house and it is under attack and... Nobody's disturbed from their sleep. The lot is outside the door trying to fight off people that are beating down the door. And the wife don't come. And the kids are none affected. Don't nobody see what's going on but me. And sometimes it feels like You trying to conserve the peace of no peace. Does that make sense? You know the city's about to be destroyed. And you creeping outside the door, closing it behind you because you don't want to wake nobody up in the house. While you control every attack from the outside from getting inside. But his greatest challenge is in the house. comes time to leave the Bible says that they linger God has to pick him up and move him the wife and the two kids out the city then when it comes time for them to run up the mountain she turns around you had one job, one task, one assignment. I asked you one thing. And you get sidetracked. You... Now I'm left taking care of these girls by myself. It's, it's a lot. I gotta move, I gotta pack up, I gotta bury you, I gotta explain to them why you not here. It's a lot. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. I just I feel like that sometimes, like, it's too.
too much is the attack it's too much it's everybody came it's why is it this big for somebody so small why why is it such great presence when I'm just one person he's carrying a lot that is on him he has the weight of preserving his family line and don't have no men around he has to take care of girls and he ain't never been one and don't don't know how to cook he move into a cave versus a town he has to raise them in a rough place where they have no money he can't even get them a date that rapists don't even want them this this is what he's dealing with he has to go to the mountain because he's afraid of being in the city small town because if anybody sees him they're going to identify the burning of Sodom and Gomorrah to the only man that made it out this is a lot on lot you would be running you would be a fugitive you on the wanted list for arson and murder torture this is the crime of crime why you make it out? Why didn't what killed them kill you? What? Why everybody so consumed about this and that, but you not? How can you be in a place where there's panic, but you have peace, and then where they're comfortable, you have to leave because their comfort makes you uncomfortable? You can't get alone and go alone. You, you can't be. You can't be around nobody. You have to go to a cave of preservation because that's where you find your peace at. And then, you're in there with family, and those are the ones who, who get you drunk and use you. They know what you got on you. They they know what you've been through. They know you're mourning. They know you sad. You upset. You missing home. Don't have your wife. Push to the cave. You mean when I am at my lowest. That's when you decide to attack from inside the house. And it's not just you trying to preserve. Yeah, you make it sound good why you lie. You, you, you make me think I should be okay with it because it seemed like you did it for me. It, 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 it's crazy that I feel bad when you did wrong. Are you, are you concerned about my future? Are you concerned about your feelings? Is this payback for what happened back when? Because there was a suggestion. That ain't nobody even touch you. It's, even if I pushed you out there, they, they ain't even want you. It's a lot on you. And so he drinks with them. And they get him drunk. The Bible says he don't know when they came in. Laid with them. Nor when they got up and he left. They left. The Bible says that they both would become pregnant with their father's children. I see nowhere where they ever found husbands. But that their seed, this generation, still exists there today. Lot has to raise, play with, and can't really ask what happened. 
Because I know what you did. But if you say it, it's going to hurt to know it. Because though you did it, I did it. Think of that you put people in a protective place. You're trying to protect the one that came to you. You're trying to please everybody. Ain't nobody concerned about your peace. They would be. They would be the lock that's on lock tonight. Abraham finds himself in the chapter before pleading for somebody's behalf. That Sodom and Gomorrah is a physical place, but it is a mental place as well. A place where you're not even free in your mind is that you are burning. The lust of sin, the desire of the world is inside of you. And he's like, if they're ten, can you free them? I'm trying to find out on tonight what is the coalition, what is the relation, what is the defining factor that Abraham hasn't even had a child. And he's pleading for the case of his brother's child. And God tells me on tonight, it's the same thing, Jeremiah. It's a lot, but it's not for you. Abraham becomes the father of many nations. But before God can entrust Abraham with his own seed, Abraham has to be protective of the seed that is connected to him but didn't come from him. What am I talking about? Lot is not Abraham's child. Lot loses his wife to a life of sin. And the daughters are the only two that's left behind. And Abraham stands in a place where he is at the ear of God. And what do you do? And Abraham pleads for 50, 45, 40, 30, 25, 20, and 10 people. And God agrees not to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah if there are 10 people righteous found. Seemingly the only people that make it out, Lot, two daughters, wife. Even though she was turned into a pillar of salt, she still made it out. But then you have to count the father and the son. God, that are the two men that are standing there are and that makes six. I'm sure. I'm sure the person. I'm trying to find out what's the relation, what's the coalition, what is, what's the defining factor that sets you free on tonight. That you can have a weight and a lot over your life. You can be going through the most but you ain't consumed because you ain't turned into salt. You you ain't lost your mind yet. You, you ain't so far in it that you just gave up on it. Turn back. So there's one person we did not count. And it was the Lord that stayed behind the count to Abraham talk to Abraham and that gives us our ten people and so he's pleading with God that the city be not destroyed and he's talking to God about if ten be found righteous would he not consume the place with fire but why is he so consumed with a city he don't stay in being consumed because it's not for him. 
at the end of the day, Abraham could die, but God has to make him the father of many nations and says, all I need is 10. All I need is 10, not to destroy the world. All I need is 10. I couldn't find 10. So we made 10. Which is why Lot is not consumed. Lot's not righteous. His daughters may be hymen unbroken, but they're not clean. They didn't choose to be virgins. Won't well, nobody touch them. It's a lot. It was a revelation from then until now is that Abraham would be unconnected to Lot seemingly, but Lot still falls under the promise that for the preservation of life and the blessing over his seed that Abraham received. And we here tonight fall in the same category. Don't know if we're related, don't know if it is directly blood. I don't I don't know what it is. But I do know on tonight where there would be the gap between us in connection of meeting the mark of being at the point of being 10 points over or uh, 10 deeds less or uh, wayward by opinion of if I was good enough and or bad enough, if I make it in or if I, if I end up missing and going to hell. And Jesus, who stood in the gap then, stands in the gap now and says, I'll be that one plus. Now make sure you get in. But you have to be in a place to be like them and keep going. I know it hurt. I know it hurt that you've been with her your entire life. And now she's not with you no more. I know it hurt to lose a parent and still have to keep on going. I know that it hurts that you look like you can never have children. You never have a future ahead of you. I, I know those things hurt. But you have to keep going. See, they didn't get to see the fire until they was on the mountain, but they still had to go. You you have to know it. You have to know it before you know it and see it before you see it. You you have to keep going even though everybody else is staying. You you have to keep going even when your parents become stubborn and don't want to move. When when they are steadfast and unmovable in the wrong thing, you have to be so sure. I know what God told me. I, I've, I've got to go. And there's going to be some people that weigh on you a lot in relationship, weigh on you a lot in, in friendship, in communication. And this is confidence. This is people that I'm personal with. It weighs on you, but... Some people you have to leave behind so you can save what is to come. It's a lot, but you can handle it. It is it's a lot, but you can handle it.